Now that we know how to work with vertex form, we want to look at um, what if we're given some information about an equation and we're actually asked to write an equation for that information. Specifically, what if we're given a vertex and a point? Um, I'm going to look at three different examples. The third one is slightly different from the first two. So either make sure that you watch um, both example one and two and stick with through example three or um, fast forward through example two but, and, and then watch example three, you know, whatever whatever you feel you need to understand the material. Um, so, so far, remember, we've looked at two different forms, standard form and vertex form. Um, if we are given a vertex and we're given a point and we want to write an equation in vertex form, um, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our vertex for hk into our standard equation. And then we're going to take our point and we're going to plug it in for x and y. This is going to leave us with a variable of a. We're going to solve for that a, then rewrite our equation with a, h, and k plugged in. So we do have our, um, our given equation in vertex form with an independent variable of x and a dependent variable of y. So going through that process on example one, I'm given a vertex, so I'm given an h, comma, k value, and I'm given a y-intercept. Now, remember, a y-intercept is a point. It's the point where I'm on the y-axis, and if I'm on the y-axis, notice I have gone left or right zero. So when they give me the y-intercept, they're essentially giving me the point zero, two. So I'm going to plug that in for x and for y. So I'm going to take my vertex form, and I'm going to have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And as I just said a moment ago, I'm going to rewrite this with all that information plugged in. So 2 is going in for y. I don't know a. 0 is going in for x. Minus a negative 1 for k becomes plus 1, excuse me, for h, and a 0 for k. This then gives me 2 equals a times 1 squared. I don't have to write the plus 0. Um, scoring 1 is just 1, so I get an a value of 2. Once I know what a is, I'm going to go back and just put it into my equation. I'm also going to put h and k in, again, then giving me that equation in vertex form. And I get y equals 2 times x minus a minus 1 squared plus, I can say plus 0. Doing plus 0 really doesn't do anything for me. Um, I don't need to have that there. I could just rewrite this as 2 times x plus 1 squared. Um, real difference between the two of these is this first form makes it very clear and easy to see the y value of my vertex, whereas this one I have to kind of um, be able to determine on my own what and interpret that meaning of what it is if there is nothing added on here. Um, let's look at another example like this, one that I don't um, necessarily have as many zeros involved. So up the difficulty level just a little bit, but overall same directions. I'm given a vertex, I'm given an hk, and I'm given a point, I'm given an x, y. So my general form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where I want h, k, and a all filled in. I can't um, plug in for a because I don't know it, but I can plug in for h and k and then also for x and y and use that to determine my a. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I get negative 4 equals a times x minus 3 squared plus Oops, and I forgot to plug my x in. I'm going to go back. I know what my x is. It's 5. 5 minus 3 squared plus 4. So now I've plugged in all my given information, and now I'm going to go ahead and work to solve this for a. Starting in my parentheses, now I'm doing exponents. 2 squared is 4, so I get negative 4 equals a times 4, which is the same thing as 4a. Go ahead now, just solve this linear equation. And I get an a value of negative 2. So now going back to actually write that equation, I get y equals a times x minus h squared plus a k value of 4. So notice I've taken my um, kind of standard y equals x squared parent function, and I've went ahead and I have because of this negative, reflected it over the x-axis. It has been stretched by a factor of 2, making it look skinnier. Um, and I have a new vertex of 3, 4. So it's been shifted right 3 and up 4. 
Um, notice I could, if I were asked to change this to standard form, I could square this, distribute the minus 2, and combine like terms to put it in that ax squared plus bx plus c form as well. Looking at my third and final example, a little bit different. So now I'm asked to actually determine a and k if I'm given two points. Here are my two points, and I'm given a little bit more information. I'm given my h, but not my k, and again, not my a. So what I'm going to do, since I have two unknowns, I want to be able to have two equations, because if I have two equations where I'm solving for two unknowns, I know I can use either substitution or elimination to solve for those two unknowns. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in. I'm going to plug in for x, y for my first equation and x, y for my second equation. So my first equation becomes 6 equals a times negative 2 minus 3 squared plus k. Well that's the same thing as saying 6 equals a times negative 5 squared. I know if I'm squaring inside parentheses, it becomes a positive 25a plus k. So there's going to be my first equation. My second equation, doing the same thing but now using my second point, I get 1 equals a times 3 minus 3 squared plus k. This simplifies to be 1 equals a times 0 squared plus k. Well, in this particular situation, I get fairly lucky in the aspect that that's going to drop to be 0, so it's already going to tell me what k is, so I can go ahead then and substitute this in and use that to solve for a. So 6 equals, doing that, 25a plus 1. I subtract 1 from each side to solve this linear equation. Divide by 25 and I get one-fifth for my a value. Now that I know both a and k, I can go ahead and write my general equation. Um, my um, general equation to have both of these points on the graph is going to be y equals 1 over 5 times x minus 3 squared plus a k value of 1. And like I said, if I had not had this drop out so nicely, I definitely could have also used elimination to help me solve for that. Um, a and K value as well.